What exactly is humidity? Invisible steam, gaseous rain, mist, odorless unicorn farts? No! It's just moisture, or water vapor to be exact, that's in the air. Now, when I say in, don't think of it as being somehow attached to the air or joined at the molecular level, because it's not. I mean, it's just kind of hanging out in the gaps in between the air's molecules. However, water molecules can only join this vapor party when there's enough energy around it to release it from its bonds as a liquid, turn it into a vapor, and keep it there, bouncing around frivolously with all those air molecules. Ah, hey kids, this is Everest, and welcome to Humidity 101. Now, you may have heard that hot air can hold on to more moisture than cold air. Hmm, yeah, kind of. I mean, I really don't like the holding on to notion, so instead think of it like this. The warmer the air or the water, the more energy it contains, and the more the air and water molecules move and collide with each other. Bam! These tiny collisions transfer energy, and when a water molecule gains enough energy, it can free itself from the attractive forces that hold it together as a liquid and liberate itself as a vapor. Woohoo! Anyway, bear in mind that this water molecule could be located on the surface of your nutrient reservoir, or maybe the Pacific Ocean, or on a bead of sweat emerging from your stinky, hairy armpit. Mm, nice. Or it could simply be moisture passing through the microscopic holes called stoma in your plant's leaves. It's all the same deal, just thermodynamics in action. Okay, so humidity's covered. I mean, I hope. I mean, basically, it's just water vapor in the air. You got that already. So let's move on to relative humidity. Expressed as a percentage, relative humidity tells you how full of moisture your air is for any given temperature. There's a limit. Basically, when there's no energy left for further evaporation, your air is completely saturated with moisture. Think Fort Lauderdale in August. Then your relative humidity is 100%. That is, your air is 100% percent full. If it's super dry and has no water vapor at all, think the Arizona desert, your relative humidity is going to be close to zero percent. So what has any of this got to do with the plants you're growing in your basement? Hmm? Well, firstly, plants sweat or transpire like humans do primarily to keep themselves in the air around them cooler. The lower the relative humidity, the more room there is in the air for evaporated moisture molecules to leap up and join the vapor party. That's why Florida feels so hot and sticky. Our shiny tan bodies are trying to cool themselves by sweating butt but there's precious little space left for additional moisture molecules to evaporate from our skin and relieve us from some of the heat at the same time. Remember, most plants don't like being hot and sticky any more than we do. Getting relative humidity right throughout your grow is like hitting a moving target. I mean, in general terms, when your plants are just starting out, either as a cutting or a seedling, they enjoy high relative humidity, 80% or more. That's why we use propagators to seal in the moisture. We want to minimize the air's moisture sucking on your plants as the last thing you want to be doing at this stage is putting undue pressure on their small undivided developed root systems. Moving on, when your plants are growing, that is, building stems and leaves, they prefer relative humidity to be around 55 to 70 percent. And finally, when they are flowering and fruiting, the ideal is around 40 to 55 percent. This helps them focus on producing buds, flowers, and fruits. These guidelines indicate that as plants develop, their need for humidity tends to decrease. However, the bigger and more numerous your plants indoors, the more moisture they transpire and the more they contribute to your grow room's humidity. It's sort of a conflict of needs, isn't it? This is why we ventilate our grow rooms or use air conditioners and dehumidifiers. Of course, relative humidity is dependent on temperature, and that should be ideally somewhere in the 70s for most species. Remember that any changes you make to your grow room's humidity should be as gradual as the changes taking place in your plants. Okay, so how do we make these changes? Well, the first thing you're going to need is a hygrometer, so you can monitor relative humidity in your grow room. They start around 30 bucks. Get a digital model. In fact, get several and record minimum and maximum readings for different parts of your grow room. These are particularly important because when your grow lights switch off for your plant's night cycle, temperatures in your indoor garden will fall naturally. This, in turn, reduces the amount of water vapor the air can party with. Remember that an 18 degree Fahrenheit drop in air temperature will have the amount of moisture the air can hold. Where does the other moisture go? Good question! It condenses onto any surface it can find. Leaves, buds, flowers, fruits, walls, floors, you name it. This can massively increase the risk of molds and mildews that could decimate some sensitive crops in a matter of days. So sad. Growers control humidity in a number of ways. Techniques differ according to geographical location. Growers in areas with moderate humidity use ventilation, that is, extracting away water warm, humid air, and replacing it with cool, moderately humid air. Growers in Miami don't have this option because, well, their air outside is already really humid. They would tend to use an air conditioner, carbon dioxide supplementation, and dehumidifiers. Now, the most common problem faced by indoor gardeners is a grow room that is too humid, full of flowering, heavily fruiting plants. The simplest fix is to invest in a dehumidifier. This Ideal Air 50 pint dehumidifier can be plumbed straight into a drainage point. You can even reuse the water once the unit has been running three days. It removes up to 50 pints a day in standard conditions, but is actually capable of removing significantly more moisture from a hot, damp grow room. As a general rule, your dehumidifier should be rated to remove at least the same amount of water as your plants drink in a day when mature. Just be sure to plug it into a suitable controller such as the EOS-1 or the Cronus or Saturn product series by Titan Control. 
Another way of countering spikes in relative humidity and condensation falling on your plants after your lights go off is to deploy a thermostatically controlled heater on a timer to keep temperatures closer to lights on levels. A small difference between your lights on and lights off temperatures will also help encourage squatter plants that are easier to light efficiently. If you're growing in a ventilated indoor garden, remember it's vitally important to keep your extraction fans on 24-7. Growers wanting to increase humidity should consider grow tents, propagators, humidity domes, trays full of water on the floor, or just plug in a humidifier if you have to. Okay. That will do for this 101. We'll cover dew points, vapor pressure deficit, and all sorts of other fun stuff in a follow-up video soon. If in the meantime you hit me up with any questions or comments below, I'm here to help because I either love you all very much or I clearly don't have much of a life. In any case, make sure you subscribe. It's free and you'll get updated when I release new videos. Thanks for watching. This is Everest transpiring happily and waving goodbye. See you again soon.